morning, and welcome to St. Philip Benici. <clears throat> Today is March the 7th, the third Sunday of Lent. We fail, we sin, we fall. We humans are weak, so we turn to God for strength. During this penitential season, we are keenly aware of our need for mercy and forgiveness. God's mercy and forgiveness came to full fruition in Jesus, who redeemed us by taking on our failings, our sins, our mortality. God has the words of everlasting life, as we sing in the psalm today. So we look to God this day for words of mercy and love, as we recommit ourselves to our Lenten disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray for our sick. Guadalupe Estrada, Gloria Romero, Virginia Martinez, Anna Marie Gordillo, Frank Leal, Brian Escalante, Rick Flores, Christine Reyes, Daniel Ramos, Ozzy Reed, Caleb Emery, Juana Guzman, Patricia Hernandez, Carmen Gonzalez, Frank Munoz, Martina Salazar, Olga Consuelo Cajawa, Johnny Reyes, Baltasar Ramirez, Alex Castillo IV, Tommy Williams, Elizabeth Garcia, Mario Salinas, Maria de Salinas, Rosario de Salinas, Leonard Garcia Jr., Alyssa Hilbert, Mimi Garcia Campbell, Alan Garcia, Jesus Zuniga Mendoza, Juanita Marquez, Susie Carrasco, Sarah Plata, Mrs. Manta, Blanca Hernandez, Vincent A. Ganato, Blanca Stella Hernandez, Stella Arriaga, Antonio Ortiz, Gloria Gonzalez, Danny Lopez, Virginia and Tony Espinosa, all the nursing homes, Roy Rivera, Eleuterio M. Garcia, Elma Rivera, Sylvia Olivera, Sharon Scott, Marcela Ortaz Olivares, Luan Portales, Serena Mercedes Medellin, Mike Hernandez, Angelina Leija. Please stand for Father Albert. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we come together this morning to celebrate the, the third Sunday of Lent. 
and I want to welcome all of you who are here present and also those who are watching us uh, through you know, social media. Welcome, we are praying for you and asking God's blessing upon you and asking God to watch over you and may all of you be under God's holy uh, protection. And this Holy Mass will be offered for Al Alma Herrera, as we know that uh, uh, you, we got uh, some good news, you know, her husband called me last time, he said that, uh, you know, she began to breathe on her own, so she's still in ICU, you know, she's still there, and uh, let her keep on uh, praying for her, so that she can come and uh, in a full recovery very soon. You know, God bless her and uh, keep on making her well. And also for all the sick, for all of you, those who are here and those who are watching, also we are praying for you. This Mass is uh, for you and for your family and for people you really, you know, care for. And uh, we pray also for James Gonzalez, our brother, Rosendo G. Martinez, Dorothy Canales, Maria Reyes, Ed Hernandez and the family, Jean Martin Alanis, Jose Leon Gomez, Adeline Wisa. May God bless them and welcome them into his kingdom. We pray, pray for Gloria, Gloria Diaz, and for God to welcome her into his kingdom. We pray for uh, Abelio and Hobita um, and their family. May God uh, watch over them and uh, make them well. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us ask for God's forgiveness. Uh, as you know, sometimes uh, we have issues in life, but we don't deal with it. And God is asking us to deal with that issue. We just push it off, you know, or we deny, we live in denial. And we uh, want to ask God for forgiveness and invite him to come to our lives and to help us uh, to deal with any issue we have to deal with. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Our Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, God, have mercy on us, uh, forgive our sins, and uh, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have known, have shown us a remedy for our sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all the, these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of the place that place of, of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You should not crave idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. 
you should not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their fathers, wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousand, thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep Holy Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by, by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You should not, not kill, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness against your neighbor, you should not covet your neighbor's house, you should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor nothing else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, you have the words of the everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the symptom, to the simple. The percepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness, to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness, wickedness, weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now I love the soul and the soul of Jesus Christ. The light of the world to follow in our Glory and praise. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw, to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritans. Jesus said to her, If you know the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. A woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flock? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring, spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw, to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman said to Jesus, I do not have a husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have been, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is a true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your people 
your people worshipped Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you people say that the place that you worship is in Jerusalem. Jira said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because the salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and it is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and the truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people and indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is Spirit, and those who worship Him must their worship in Spirit and the truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking to you. At that moment, his disciples returned and they were amazed that uh, he was uh, talking with a woman. But still, no one said, what are you looking for? Or what are you talking to, talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could be possibly the Messiah. They went out there of the town and they came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields are ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that uh, the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began, began to believe in him because of uh, the word of the woman who testified he told me everything I have uh, done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them. 
and uh, he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because uh, of uh, his, his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of uh, your word. For we have heard for ourselves. And we know that uh, this is uh, truly <coughs> the savior of uh, the world. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Okay, so today's gospel is talking about uh, the Samaritan woman. It's an encounter between Jesus and uh, the woman. You know, like was like a personal, personal encounter, personal, personal experience with Jesus. This woman had issues like everybody else. You know, all of us, we have our own issue. Each person has his own issue. And that woman is also, she had an issue. You know, she had a kind of emptiness, like all of us, we have that emptiness. You know, we want to be happy in life, but we want to wanna be happy, we want to own things, you know. You know, we want to own things. We have desire to have. We want to be famous. We want people to know us. We want to have power over other people. And the demon knows that. The devil knows that very, very well. Knows our needs. Knows our desires. And the demon, demon knows how to get us how to, to take us away from God's hands. Because we are here in God's hands. As long as you stay in God's hands, the demon can do anything to you. But if you decide, if you decide to climb down, then the demon can do anything that he wants with you. So what, what the demon does, since he knows our needs, it will uh, tempt us, what we call temptation. Like I always say, temptation isn't a sin, but giving in to temptation becomes a sin. So the demon, the demon will come with all bunch sort of things, lies and everything, you know, to lure us to do what he wants us to do, and then we'll end up uh, getting in trouble, or we'll end up in uh, a place we don't want to be. How many people have not uh, stolen because they want to have money? They want to, you know, they want to have, they want to own things. How many people have not, have, have not killed because uh, they want to have? You know, how many people got involved in uh, illegal activities or businesses because they want to, they want to, you want to have money, you want to succeed in life. You know? And then they found out that uh, it wasn't a good idea to do that because they brought, brought more trouble in their lives. Because what the enemy offers you is like what we call a mirage. Mirage is a it's a kind of like an illusion. It's like when you are driving down the highway, far away you can see it looks like water. It's like there is a water there. But it's not, it's just a reflection of the sun. And when you get closer, there is no water there. The same way also, the demon, the demon would offer you things, you know, making you believe that if you own this, 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 your life would be more fulfilling, you will be happier. And then you got all the things that demand, that demand offer, or offer, or that demand gives you, and then you find yourself uh, in a bad situation, 
in a, in a, let us say, in a worse situation. This woman, she was going to get water, and uh, Jesus was sitting by the, by the well. And the woman got there, and there was this encounter between both. You know? They began to talk to each other. God asked him to give, Jesus asked her, if Jesus said, give me water. And he said, you know, how can you, a Jew, ask me, as a Samaritan woman, to give you water? Because we don't have nothing in common. We don't have nothing to do with each other. You cannot ask me for water. Jesus said, he said to him, to her, if you know who is asking you for water, you will give me, will, you will ask me. If you know, if you know who, who is talking to you, you will ask him, you will ask me to give you water. Jesus was talking about life, living water. The woman said, give me that water, then I don't have to come back again, you know, to, to get water. Jesus said, go call your husband. He said, I don't have one. So the woman was honest with Jesus. Because he could uh, talk himself out of that conversation or that uh, encounter between himself, herself and Jesus. But he decided to be honest with, with, uh, with Jesus. So if you have any issue, there is not, not, it's not good to be ashamed. There is nothing to be ashamed of because everyone you see out there, they have their own issues. No one can say, I don't have issues, no. Everybody has their own issues. So we don't have to be embarrassed when you have to, you know, to talk your, your, about your issue or to take your issues to God, maybe through confessions. You know, don't be embarrassed because everybody, like I said, has their own issue. Everyone. And the woman opened up to Jesus and said, no, I don't have a husband. Jesus said to her, yes, you are being honest. You don't have one. You had, uh, you, you, you had f five, uh, five husbands, and this one is not even your husband. And he said, God, uh, um, he said, he said, that woman said, you, are, you must be a prophet. And she said, I know that the Messiah will be coming one day. Jesus said to her, I am the Messiah. And after that encounter, so, I mean, that encounter back and forth helped her to know who Jesus was. You know, when she knew Jesus, she fell in love with Jesus. And she went to talk about Jesus to everybody. Invited people from her town, talk about Jesus, you know, everything. The story of this woman is the story between you and that, of you and that. You know, we have our own issues in life, we have needs, we have an emptiness, so like that woman had an emptiness in her life, and she was trying to fill up that emptiness by changing husbands. It didn't work. Only when uh, she had that encounter with Jesus, Jesus had filled up that emptiness. And she was the happiest woman ever. And she began to talk about Jesus. So for us also we have that emptiness in life. And many people try to fill it up uh, with uh, things uh, that do not help. But for us it's good to fill it up with God. Because if you have a God, you have everything. You know, especially during this pandemic where when people, you know, people are afraid, the people are, the pandemic has changed our lives. I would say, don't be afraid. You know, how we don't have to feel, our, to feel ourselves with fear. Fear is good to feel ourselves with God. You know, and when, when you have God, and God is the only one who can give you happiness. 
you know. And um, some people will tell me, oh, Father Albert, you know, I have faith in God. And uh, since I have faith in God, I'm, the, I'm the afraid, afraid of the pandemic. I will go out and do whatever I want to do. I know that God will help me. No, that's not God. Remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert, the demon said to him, if you are the son of God, turn those stones to bread. Or throw yourself from the top of that temple, throw yourself down and the, the angels will come to help you. God will send the angels. Just said, no, you should not put, your, you should not test, test your God. For us also, we don't, not, don't do that. Don't say, oh no, I don't, uh, uh, I will not do anything. You know, I know that I believe in God. Uh, I will do anything I want and uh, I know that God will protect me. No. God doesn't work that way. The only thing we have to know that we have something we have to do for us by uh, following the guidelines. And then God also has, uh, he will do his part. Everybody has to do something. There is some issue that can come up, people telling me that, oh, Father Albert, you know, I don't feel comfortable receiving communion uh, with my hands. But I will, I will ask myself, what is, a, what, is a more, is a, what is worthy? Our hands or our mouths? You know, talking about mouth, I have my doubts that it is holy, you know. So we, that's why we say, I am not worthy to receive you, Almighty Father. My tongue or my mouth, my hands, they are the worthy to receive Jesus. You know, that's why you say that. So it doesn't matter to receive your communion on your tongue or in your hands. You know, the tongue is not holier, holier than uh, your hands. You know, so you receive it from in your uh, 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 by mouth or on your hands. Uh, it's going to be always a body of Jesus. Your hands or your tongue will not change. You know what uh, the Holy Communion is. So may God bless each one of you. May we be under God's protection. May we be um, willing to open up to God and uh, to have that encounter with Him, to let Him change us, to let Him feel us. You know, because uh, if you have God, you have everything. Amen. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe. My brothers and sisters, let us offer our petitions to God, the Almighty Father. For the Church, led by Pope Francis.
Francis that we might cleanse ourselves of corruption and division as we renew our commitment to the mission Jesus left us. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. For our leaders, that they might work toward the common good of all, so that those who live on the margins of society are given assistance and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That women around the world might be free from abuse, harassment, and unfair discrimination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be initiated into the church this Easter, that they might always find in the Lord the words of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For all of us who make up this parish, that we may always keep this holy building a living temple of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For Mother the Apple in God and Seal, our prayers. We ask this as for your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We are called to act justice. that my father found your plan acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech forgiveness for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us return to our Lord and Father. It is right and just. And it is a tolerant and just our duty and our salvation. Always the everywhere to give you thanks, the Father most holy, Almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and the purifying of their hearts. That uh, free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to fall further to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints who praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of our holiness, that holy death for this people pray, by sending down your spirit upon the mother of the Father, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then. At that time, you were betrayed and entered willingly into passion. He took bread and giving thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for it for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the memory of me. The ministry of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of the salvation, and giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. I humbly pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus, we may be gathered into one brother, Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of uh, charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Archbishop, and all our clergy. Remember your children, Gloria Diaz, James Gonzalez, Rosendo G. Martinez, Dorothy Canales, Maria Reyes, Ed Hernandez, Jan Martin Alanis, Jose Dian Gomez, Adelina Wissas. And also let us pray for Ermelinda Costa, 
نام قدرت ها آمدیم در دل فکر در وقت بابات آد تاموز آن آت ها و پای در تو در بلیس خود ناری ماد آف گاد تو در بلیس جادل و سپاوس تو در بلیس آف هاتوس و آل آف هانس who have lived to you throughout the ages. We may uh, never to be for else to eternal life uh, and may uh, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we see in him, O God, the Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As the soldiers come back and from the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Deliver us from evil. 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 Deliver us Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and the gracious we grant for a peace and a unity in accordance with your will, for live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless our Lord, also the Supper of the Lamb.
As you receive the, the pleasure of a thing for yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly enter you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, we may be seated for a little while. Okay, so we have uh, among us, we have Nicole. Can you please stand up? Okay, so, and uh, 
Uh, Nicole is going to be receiving the sacrament of uh, baptism on the Easter Vigil. So last time they went to San Antonio, you know, at uh, Santa, Santa Rosa of Lima, and the Bishop uh, uh, Boulet, you know, as they chose her, elect her as uh, a candidate for uh, the sacrament of, uh, of, a bapti of a baptism and other sacraments. So, Ida Padrinos, are you here? Can you stand by her? Just please, you stand by her, and uh, just behind her, that's fine. And, uh, but if you live together, you can touch each other, otherwise that will keep the social distancing. Mm -hmm. You know, unless uh, you, you know, you, you live together, that's fine. Okay, so, and we're going to stand our hands over Nicole for our prayer. Can you please extend your hands over her? You see, the Almighty Father, bless Nicole, you know, you, uh, the candidate for a baptism on the Easter Vigil. Bless her, Almighty Father, watch over her. May she be always under her, her, your holy protection. Bless and answer her Godmother, so that uh, with the parents, they can help Nicole to grow in her faith. And may she be always under holy protection, Almighty Father. Bless Nicole, walk always before her to guide her, behind her to protect her, above her to watch over her. May God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's uh, welcome uh, Nicole as a member. You know, very good. So God bless you, Nicole. And uh, you know, on the Easter Vigil, you will be baptized. And uh, the this community is supporting you, is praying for you, you know, so that uh, that day, you know, that baptism can have a big impact uh, in your life. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, then also we know uh, the, uh, the governor said by uh, next week, by uh, Wednesday, you know, so beginning Wednesday, so we don't have to wear a mask, we don't have to, to social distance, we don't have to, we want to, to we can, we can uh, operate in 100%. But uh, the Archdiocese of San Antonio, we decided not to do that. We don't, for us, you want to come to church here in a private uh, place, you have, you have to have your mask on. And uh, please, when you come, you have the mask on so the guidelines did not change. The same, the, same, the, same, the same guidelines. And I encourage you, especially the younger one, you'll be having your spring break next week. Just be careful. Because sometimes the younger one, they go out and then they, they bring the sickness to the family. You know, so you don't want to do that. So you protect yourself and you protect also others. You know, because uh, in our community we have uh, um, COVID is still active here. You know, just uh, the last uh, uh, two weeks or three weeks, we lost only three or four people. You know, so we have uh, uh, some funeral are still pending. So, um, but I say, just continue to listen very, very carefully what the CDC is saying. Those who knows, the doctors, the scientists. If you are sick, you go to your doctor. You will do what the doctor is asking you to do. The same thing also listen very, very well to the guidelines and follow them if you want to survive this pandemic. Okay, but today at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a, um, a retreat. It's going to be like a virtual retreat, you know? So uh, it's going to be on Facebook Live, so you can watch it there at 5. You know, it's going to be a, a kind of like a, 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 a heal, a healing of uh, the wounded hearts, you know, that want to have the retreat will be about it, especially during this time of pandemic, when we think that God let us down, when we think that everything went, uh, when we think that, uh, you know, we have the plans, we plan everything very, very well, all the sudden, you know, and uh, the, the pandemic, you know, just uh, uh, brought everything down. You know, so, but we know that the guy is still in control. You know, at the end, 
as we know, our God does not uh, end with defeat, always with victory. If we do our part, God will do his part. It will end up uh, where we want to be and where God wants us to be. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty oh, the end of the morning, peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.